We haven't even started aggressively marketing, and I can tell you that we're almost at 35% uh, in, in three days. And, uh, it's going to be a fantastic show. Momentum building for a vibrant holiday season, at least as far as pop concerts are concerned. Following the lean years of the pandemic, we now have the return of Sting, intimate with Puja Banton and Barry Hammond, and there's feverish anticipation ahead of their appearance at the National Stadium come December 18 of top draw Afrobeat star Burna Boy. First week tickets snapped up online at around 143 US dollars. VVIP prices ranging from 45 to 65K. The last last single among a tier of top performers Jamaicans rarely get to see when they play the region. It was destined to happen because this is something that has been, conversation has gone on, on and off about him playing in Jamaica. So I think that it's just a, about the right time for him to come because his music also appeals to Jamaicans a lot. There is uh, a lot of, uh, if I would say, correlation between his sound and, and, and reggae dancehall. Burna Boy played Madison Square Garden in April, becoming the first Nigerian artist to sell out the famed venue. Has there been a leg of this tour that Burna Boy has been on that hasn't made money? With Burna Boy, no. I, I can tell you that Burna Boy, no. He's, he's, uh, he's blessed as his time. He's been um, on a roller coaster all through. Uh, we've not had any bad shows with him. Duke, that's not his Nigerian name, promoter of the December 18 show and partnering with Tipsy Entertainment out of Barbados, as well as Solid Agency, is a piano-playing one-time engineer whose New York-based company is Duke Concept. When I started Duke Concept, I saw that there was a need to promote, you know, there's a need to change how our music, African music, African and Caribbean music together, to be specific, where my goal, um, how it's been perceived, how it's been promoted, you know, um, and that's why I came into the industry. And, and when it was time for me to exit engineering, when engineering had gotten to the dead end for me, I had to leave engineering to focus on my company because my company got to the point where we're doing over 30 shows a month. There was a key element that sort of fell into place. What was that? If you look at the word Duke, it's, it's royalty. It's um, it's, it's uh, it was a standard, right? Uh, for me, it was creating understanding that we are royalty. Like, you know, like every black man will say we're royalty all the time. And it's not a joke, we are actually all royalty. And plus you're Nigerian. Plus I'm Nigerian, so that's double royalty. <laughs> I needed to bring that into the concert promotion, right? Which is taking away our, our concerts and, and parties from the warehouses and from the bit, a bit down uh, venues to proper venues, stadiums, arenas. And we've been able to achieve that over the years. Did you sort of break the mold? Were you readily accepted? No, I wasn't. <laughs> no, I wasn't. There were struggles um, from all, we still struggle from all corners. So for every different level that is unlocked, there's a different devil. So it, you, sometimes the struggle is from your own people who do not see what you're doing, or do not understand the vision, right? Remember that when you disrupt the system, there must be pushbacks. Because it's, you're it, um, people would feel like either you're taking money away from their table, or they will feel like you're doing too much in, in too much in, in quote in Nigerian terms, um, you know. So I wasn't ready to accept it. Now at this stage, we're still battling. Now that Afrobeat is big, we are now battling with the bigger players who have uh, more capital, right? Now they want the piece of what we build over the years. And you say Afrobeat is big. How big is it? Well, as big as Bonaboy playing at the Kingston, as National Stadium in King, Kingston, that's how big. Everywhere in the world you go, Afrobeat is on rotation in most restaurants and clubs. Um, Afrobeat is at a point where uh, you cannot overlook it. You know, every award ceremony is finding, making one or two uh, category to include Afrobeat in it. Every uh, major event has to have Afrobeat in it. The conversation is ongoing. 
in in the the world charts, if you look at the world charts, uh, music charts, there's always an Afrobeat song in it. So the, you know, it's it's crazy. Afrobeat is at the at the, at the peak, and it, it doesn't look like Afrobeat is going to slow down anytime soon. Hard like reggae and dancehall, which despite ranking in the top 10 most popular musical genres across the globe, continues to underperform commercially. Can Afrobeats help reverse this trend? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, it can. Remember the dance hall was at some point as it's peak in the world where every everyone wanted was listening to dance hall. Afrobeats is learning from Dance okay, so Dance did this at this point. This is how long they stayed this relevant. How can we not make the mistake of Dance Hall? So I think Dance Hall, intellectual school as well, you know, like the conferences that are being done, those conversations will come up. How do we get Dance Hall to get back to the world stage where it's, it, 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 it's supposed to be? And how do we do that? From my angle, I would say one is touring. Uh, because touring is very important to be able to spread the gospel of music. And if you're very observant, you would realize that a lot of the Afrobeat artists are touring around the world, using Bonaboy, for example. So the more you tour, the more people listen to the music, the more your fans grow. So give me a nugget, something that you've distilled in the course of doing what it is you've been doing that you think people could really benefit from hearing. People need to not be afraid of making mistakes. Um, that's one, because a lot of times the young people who want to get into these things, who want to do these things, but they are afraid of making mistakes, afraid of losing money, or, or they don't know where to start from. I think the best way to start from, uh, the best place to start is to start. Duke not giving anything away just yet about other performers for the December 18 concert, but he did mention one name when asked whom he might work with going forward, and others with promising international prospects. Well, Spice is my, is my very good friend, so I'll say Spice. <laughs> She's a very good friend of mine, so I'll say Spice. You have Shkili Banks, you have TJ, you have uh, Dexter Dabs, that, that, you know, that are doing well in the diaspora. You know, I think that it is, they invest more in, in collaborations and uh, publicity and, and marketing. They will be able to grow their audience a little broader.